my God. What is that? Yeah. What is that? Apparently, ladies and gentlemen, you spoiled uh, Stockholm Syndrome, sunk cost fallacy, star citizen backers might not understand this, but this is a roadmap, apparently. Hey guys, unfortunately, we have to start off today's video with uh, a bit of a sad note. Uh, I notified this morning, Tail Iron on Twitter, announcing that uh, Michael Otto has passed away from COVID complication. Guys, I know the vaccines are being rolled out, but please, it's as worst as it's ever been right now. This is the worst of it. Please stay safe. It's not over yet. And uh, on behalf of the Star Citizen community, to Michael Otto's family, our sincere condolences, and to everyone in his org, uh, Phoenix Interstellar, which is a German org, 77 guys, uh, this is very rough. Uh, so our sincere condolences and uh, very sad news to start off the morning. With that, uh, let's move on to other news. What I want to talk about today is this. This is a roadmap. Oh my God, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Apparently, ladies and gentlemen, you spoiled uh, Stockholm Syndrome, sunk cost fallacy, star citizen backers might not understand this, but this is a roadmap, apparently. To the normies out there, this is what a roadmap to a game looks like. I swear to you, it's true. This is what CD Projekt Red puts out as a roadmap. We are so spoiled. We are so spoiled. <laughs> it is. Uh, so anytime in the future, I see a game journalist questioning why it is that Star Citizen backers are willing to shell out 600 bucks for a JPEG of a ship. It's because Star Citizen does something that no other game developer does, and that is release information in quantities so abundant and high that it takes YouTube channels to explain what the content is to the people actually backing Star Citizen. There's so much of it. So let me just say, first of all, that I'm loving Cyberpunk. In fact, everyone who has a PC capable of running Star Citizen has had a relatively good experience playing Cyberpunk. And uh, I'm really looking forward to playing through again. I kind of started a second character. I played through a bit, but I got bored. I need new stuff in the game to draw me back in. So when is this new stuff going to come in? I'm wondering. Well, let's see. We had Hotfix 1. Uh, we had Hotfix 0 0.4, 0 0.05, and 0 0.06 already. And here's 2021. What's going to happen in 2021? Well, there'll be patch 1.1. Ah, and then afterwards, there'll be patch 1.2. Ah, now, between that and the end of the year, there's going to be a free DLC. <laughs> Is that really? That's it? Because the only thing drawing me back to play Cyberpunk again is the DLC content, which is supposed to come out in Q1. But I guarantee you there's no way in hell a DLC is coming out in Q1 of this year. They are so busy patching stuff up. I wish they gave us more detail. I can probably guess that in patch one or two, they'll say, okay, we've added in the ability to change the color of a vehicle, or maybe now you can change the appearance of your hair. But um, beyond that, this is what counts as a roadmap. So, so disappointing to some people like myself, I really want to get in there and play more cyberpunk. But if this is the extent of what the, they're putting out, I don't know what's going to draw me in until multiplayer comes out in the year 2025 or something. But nice try. Uh, also, if you saw, they came out and gave a, hey. um, this is the co-founder, came out and gave a little apology tour. Now, he has been ripped apart on social media, rightfully so by console owners who thought they were pre-ordering a game which was at least in a playable state. So he has a lot of apologizing to do. But not only that, the devs are being attacked. The guy who designed the wheels on the motorcycle, the texture of them, he is being attacked. Well, not guys specifically, but devs in general are being attacked. And that is not right. Because you know the devs are putting their heart and soul into making the game. They're doing everything they can to make the game as good as possible to the best of their abilities. But online and social media, they're just ripping apart the devs completely. And he's coming out and saying, listen, that's not the devs' fault. The devs are doing a great job. It goes, it's my fault. Let's listen to what he has to say here. 
everyone. My name is Marcin Iwinski and I'm the co-founder of CD Projekt. When I started CD Projekt 25 years ago, one of its founding principles was honest and direct communication with gamers. All right, so starting off weekly then, because the first thing it goes, the founding principle is to be direct and straight with gamers. Uh, already just for that line, he's been ripped apart on social media because now they go, you lie. And uh, it feels weird that me, average uh, YouTube person, influencer. <laughs> Uh, is giving advice in the sense, but you got to take a book out of politics for this. And that is, don't apologize. Come out and say, hey guys, we know this wasn't good. We are going to make it better. Don't say you're sorry and start giving excuses because they are ripping you apart online for this already. Uh, let's continue. When Set the Break Red, the game development part of Set the Break was born, it added something important to that principle, the ambition to make the best games in the world. And you know what, the Witcher, nothing but praise for Witcher. I, unfortunately, have failed three or four times to actually finish The Witcher. I don't know if it's a problem with me. Anyone else out there? I want to really enjoy The Witcher, but I get about halfway or three quarters of the way through and my, my playtime kind of drops off and I've yet to finish it. And I swear one day I will go back and finish it, but. I just can't seem to do it. I don't know what it is. It became our mission and something that guided us up until now. Based on that legacy of genuine and honest communication, you've trusted us and pre-ordered our game. Right. And despite good reviews on PC, the console version of Cyberpunk 2077 did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. Okay, now I can vouch for that. Uh, as a PC owner of a, and a PC capable of running Star Citizen, uh, minimum specs with at least an SSD, NVMe even better. Uh, I did not have much of a problem with Cyberpunk. I did not hit any game-breaking bugs, and in the rare case there was a bug, I simply went back to the previous save point and played through and was fine that time around. Uh, so I understand some people have had problems, but just for my side, I can't speak for everyone, but I really had minimal problems and thoroughly enjoyed the game. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this, and this video is me publicly owning up to that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the right... I mean, I appreciate that. I get that. Uh, I don't need public apologies from this. We know what happened. What happened was they needed to get the game out. The board of directors and investors said, listen, we are out of money. Rather, we're not giving you any more money. Like, this is it. The game has to go out now and sell it. And they made the decision. I believe he knew very well. He's going to go on to and blame uh, Q&A. Go, QA said it was fine. He made some kind of story like that. Listen, I don't buy it. I believe 100% they knew the state the game was in. And they took the warnings from the devs and QA. QA said, absolutely not. Don't put this out. It is broken. They said, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We'll get it out. We'll get in the money. They brought in about five, six hundred million dollars. Once we have the money, we can then put that money back into developing and fix the problems, which is generally what uh, Bethesda and a lot of other game developers do. Uh, we did not expect this from CD Projekt Red. That is the difference here. But 100%, uh, they knew what they were putting out. But the gamble was that they will basically have the time to fix it. And it's pretty true. Look, look back in the way, are we January 15th? Let's look back here in July. I guarantee you by July, the bugs will be gone and all this will be forgotten, which was their gamble. Short-term pain, longer-term gain. Let's do this. And that's what they did there. So, okay, we'll have to watch the rest of it because I just summarized what's going to happen there. But uh, in my opinion, that is what happened. They said, we're going to take the hit. We'll take the hit. I'll go up and I'll apologize and I'll say we're sorry. But uh, in the long run, now that they have the money in, now they can continue working on the game. Now they can fix every bug they can. Uh, and listen, gamers have a short memory for the most part. And uh, in a couple of months' time, when things are smooth, uh, all this will be forgotten. So their strategy might have worked out. Well, let's wrap this up. Okay, guys, you know what to do. If you enjoy this content, subscribe below over there. Your comments below always appreciate it. Thumbs up if you like this. And I will catch you in the next one. Have a wonderful weekend.